So the idea right now is to mark the uh, Genoa leads for the new Genoa. And I think, so we're close hauled with the sail just about against the spreaders. And I think that's about right. The idea is to get the tension more or less the same on the foot and the leech. Boy, they call this winter. And it is, but winter in Los Angeles. So how should we judge winter? We could use the old standby for literary critics. What did the artist set out to do? Did he do it? And where's it worth doing? Well, if this winter set out to improve on its previous behavior, and it does it, that's plenty good enough for me. So that's the second mark, and it yeah, needs to go forward a couple of feet. The age-old method of stepping on the Genoa sheet to take the strain off while you move fairly. I think that looks good. And for the third mark, I think all the way up there is best because that is about 90% overlap. I'll leave the top of the sail open a little because if you're reduced sail this much, probably you want some relief. And these three markings will just transfer it to the other side of the boat. It's blowing about seven knots, but it's actually fun to sail with a 90% jib just by furling the 135% jib. Hardly. You know, the Genoa doesn't have to drag around the mast. And we get more, we really get more power out of the jib from its slot than simply its, its raw square footage. And if you're alone, short tacking out of a harbor, man, that's the way to do it. Every winter is a time of reassessing, fixing what's broke or about to be broke, you know, before the lilacs sprang out of the dead land and so on. Lots of winters, such that you wonder how we got here. That's a big question, but I happen to have the answer. Electric bike.
water's coming in from here. They are actually pretty, pretty robust pumps. If this one is indeed 35 years old, it's a diaphragm pump, obviously. And when you step on this, the diaphragm distorts on both sides. So the water is directed out with these one-way valves on both strokes. And I could not find anything wrong with this. But now I see that actually there's a, there's a hole right there in the diaphragm. So that's where the leak was. Now the new pumps are installed and they, they're, they're white, but otherwise they're exactly the same as the old whale gusher mark three or whatever it was called. And uh, that solves one of the problems, which was that this uh, fresh water pump, which operates this way, just as a backup in case the electrical system fails offshore. The hole in the diaphragm in that caused a, an air leak, which meant that when I filled my tanks and was ready to prime the system again, the pressure water uh, with air in the system, it wouldn't uh, turn off the, when it reaches pressure as it just did. I think I have time to change out the buzzer that alerts you to engine overheating or really to low oil pressure. It just starts buzzing for no reason at all. The engine temperature doesn't change and the oil level is normal. Be a miracle if we can avoid a bilge dive But we have to believe, we have to believe that I'm not going to drop this tiny screw. Every time you don't believe, not only does a fairy die, but you have to grovel down looking for the part. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No, if that qualifies for this week's triumph, it hasn't been a very exciting week. So that's what it's supposed to do. It buzzes because the engine is an on and it says, heads up, there is no oil pressure. When we turn the engine on, it's supposed to turn off. Oh dear. Well, that is a little too much to account for by rainwater. My uh, theory was that I might have a leak in uh, the stainless water tank. So when I left the boat yesterday, I left the water pressure on because the test yesterday after a couple of days of having a full tank sh suggested that there was nothing wrong. The water level was the same. Then I thought, well, wait a minute. Maybe I have left the water pressure on and the slight pressurization that the pump makes might have forced water into the bilge, revealing a leak. So, the water level was one and three eighths down. And we'll see if it still is. No, the water level is way down. 
three inches down. Okay. Not all news is welcome news. But what that means is that this builds water, which is fresh, came from there. There's either a leak in the plumbing, which is unlikely because I've checked all of that, or there is a pinhole leak in the uh, stainless steel tank itself. We're here today to finish the maintenance coats of varnish on these teak grab rails. Maintenance because I'm trying to save them. They are original to the boat, which was built in 1984. They probably have 12 or more coats of varnish on them over the years. I put on about two coats every 18 months or something. But here's what happens with old varnish. You can see wherever there's water incursion, there's discoloration. And I scraped some of this down two weeks ago and actually put a couple of touch-up coats on here and so that if this has 12 layers of varnish, this only has four. And you can see the difference. Any of this discoloration is a result of, of water entering under the membrane of the varnish. So, what I really should do, and will do eventually, is to strip them down to bare wood and start over. But that means uh, seven coats and it's quite a, a big job it's much easier to just put a couple of maintenance coats on so uh, as happens with sailboats we are delaying the inevitable growing up I was told by folks who knew better that you could tell a sailor's commitment or insanity level by the cut not of his jib but of his sail cover. So I figured to make a new one but after ordering the material and seeing the scope of work say what's wrong with the old sail cover? So I turned that long semi flat felled seam into a cover for one of the club lasers. I was in the process of revising the sail cover anyway because I no longer leave the lazy jacks that keep the sail on the boom on after the sailing day is finished because reattaching all of these, these uh, fasteners I found really irritating and, um, and yet the sail cover uh, was designed for them so I put these covers on to shed rainwater and just left them the way they were to cure the pinched look up here I added straps which wouldn't pinch it but would allow the sail to take its natural line more or less horizontal in order to get a better tension on the Let's call it the shear line of the sail cover, which is vastly improved by the ability to do this. I added a pull strap, which many sail covers have, this one didn't, so that it's merely a matter of when you're finished with putting the sail cover on, you can uh, and get a very attractive curve to it which uh, has got to be cheaper than a psychiatrist and makes everything in the universe right. In between coats, you just roughen the surface of the varnish a little bit to 
give the next one something to grip and to get rid of any imperfections or grips that might have occurred. Just don't take too much of the varnish off while you're doing it. So that it looks dull. The application of the varnish after the prep is really the easy part. The idea is to get as much varnish on as you can without having it drip. But you do have to make sure you get enough on because a void called a holiday becomes pretty obvious after a nice shiny coat of varnish dries. And if we get a drip, it's not the end of the world. Just wipes right off the gel coat. So let's make sure we get enough varnish on there. When it comes to utility, one of the smartest things I did by accident, no doubt, was to devise this uh, table caddy for the simple reason that uh, it can be moved anywhere you like. When you're sitting here at sea and reading, you can prop a book up. The pencil holder did not work. It leaves a pencil waiting to stab you. If your coffee spills in this, the spillage is contained and uh, it's been so successful on the boat that I started making them for my automobiles as well. A caddy to sit on the seat next to the driver so that there's a place to put your stuff. You know, men don't have pocketbooks. So I thought I would line this with green, green felt. I actually showed this to Tracy, my wife, and was overcome with the idea to make her a hat. It's such nice cloth, you know, sort of Robin Hood, maybe with a feather. But And she liked the idea, but I later came to think that it was Tracy just being polite. And the more I think about it, this is really unnecessary, and I'm not going to do it. There's that. Good. Now, if it doesn't rain, we can go sailing and figure out where to put the Genoa leads on the new overlapping Genoa jib. Wind. Say it. Not a bad winter at all, 2023. But I remember two years ago, winter was not this well behaved. I made these masks out of a out of a, my son's uh, bed sheets. Uh, using a pattern that was published in the New York Times a, a couple of days ago. One of the reasons that I came sailing today is because so many other people apparently can't. 
Here's a few of my correspondence. Pearl of Qatar, or Qatar, or Qatar, says, Be careful and wash your hands all the time. Don't touch your face. We are locked down in Oz, Australia, and I'm here in Doha. Bernie Fanustenda says, Lucky you, we're not allowed to sail here in Belgium. Well, Nancy says, I'm stuck in our boat Shandy in Maryland. They just closed the state and the marina. I, however, am allowed to stay. My husband's running our business in Virginia while I work remotely on board. Well, in southern Texas, a Mason 43 is being refitted by sailing La Luna Negra. Counting the days till I can begin my journey home to Dana Point. Unfortunately, the craziness caused by the virus here is palpable and getting worse. Until then, I keep my hopes up. Authorities have ruled leisure boating non-essential travel in Northern Ireland, says John Hutch. Thomas Bosch says, my wife and I are on our boat in Puerto Vallarta, and we were informed today that all ports here are now closed, and we haven't, we aren't even allowed to leave for a day sail. Rupert Sugden says, you are very lucky that you can still sail. I can't even visit my boat, let alone take her out. I feel like part of my character has been cut away and put in a safe. Marina Tensoglivio. I wish I had a boat, for now we are isolated at home, waiting for this difficult situation to finish. Good luck and greetings from Greece. Simon Whitehead, I'm based in France and not permitted to even go and check my boat, let alone go out and sail. Roger Snyder says, sailing plans for August on our 37-foot sailing vessel waves with four friends from Minnesota and Colorado are up in the air at this time. I'll, I'll say they are, Roger. Everything's up in the air, isn't it? Back to the mask for as long as it takes. Oh. Oh. And I felt that leak in the water tank. I couldn't reproduce it. So, I guess... It's one of the great rules of sailboats. If you can't reproduce the problem, maybe there's no problem, and you just monitor it. Good rule in life, too. When in doubt, do nothing. Monitor. <laughs>